Hi and thank you so much for joining me today and today is a special video because this is for the Hey Little Magpie February 2023 Cyber Crop. This is Jackie's Challenge and it's a sketch which you can see in the top right hand corner. So I'm using Print Shop from Vicky Bootin for this layout and you can see I've cut a four inch strip from this pink um, paper which I will lay down the middle and then for the um, texture that Jackie's got on the right hand side of that strip I'm using semicircles so I've used my one and a half inch circle punch punched out some circles from a black and white paper and then cut those in half and I'm just positioning them down the right hand side of this strip and what I'll do you'll see in a minute I'll turn that strip over and glue them down with some wet glue to the reverse of the paper just so that it's all one piece and it makes it easier to handle and you will have seen me doing this before in a previous video, but it really is a great way of creating a scalloped border without having to hand cut it. Any circle punch will do. Obviously, the smaller you use, the smaller your scallops will be. <laughs> so now that's down, I felt that I needed a little bit of balance on the left-hand side of this strip. So just cutting a very thin piece of the same paper to glue down to that other side there. Again, using the same technique, just running my glue down the edge and then sticking that behind. Just like that. I didn't stick it down very well, so <laughs> just making sure it's straight, then pressing it down. So now checking how I want my photos to go. I definitely want the one of James on the left-hand side so that it can overlap the one of the two of them together on the right. These are photos from the um, Ulster Folk and Transport Museum that we went to back in 2013 over in Northern Ireland. And um, in the Transport Museum, they were making Titanic hats. So the kids sat down and did the make and take there. They absolutely loved it. So just checking that's all stuck down. And positioning my photos. And now I'm going to create that stitched circle that Jackie's got in her layout. Uh, to be frank, I couldn't be bothered getting my sewing machine out. It would have been nice to do a stitched circle, but I thought I'll just do a doodle one this time round. <clears throat> and I'm pleased with the effect. It's slightly bigger than Jackie's, but it's fine. I needed the um, size really to fit my photos in comfortably because I knew I was going to add some photo mats to them. So first of all, just matting on white card, which seems to be my preferred method at the moment. It just makes the photo pop a little bit more and stand apart from the rest of the layers that I pop behind. So just trimming off the excess card. And once these are matted, I can start with all the pattern papers. And it'll be the usual theme that I do of just adding layers and layers. <laughs> I wanted to bring in some of the different colors. It's very pink at the moment. So it definitely needed some other colors coming in. That pink works really nicely with James's t-shirt but he's got a navy and white striped hoodie on and Amelia's got grey and pink on. So I just wanted to bring some other bits and pieces in to make the layout a bit more interesting as well. So my trimmer chewed up my mat a bit there, so I'm <laughs> just trimming off the excess guard. You won't notice when all the layers are added on. So starting off with some tiny bits that I found, this navy and just adding them to the backs. And then I wanted to bring in this floral paper because I'm doing such a thin mat, you won't actually see it's floral, but it just adds some nice color behind the photo. And then again, the bit that I've trimmed off, just adding to that right hand side. So decide to start gluing as I go rather than building up loads of layers and getting confused and lost. <laughs> and I want to distress all the edges. Although I didn't distress that main strip down the middle of the page, the photo maps I do want to distress the edges on. So just using my Tim Holtz edge distresser and making sure that I get the corners because that's the more tricky part to get with this edge distresser. And then adding this tiny piece of navy above and just gluing everything to the photo like I usually do so that I can check the positioning. And also I want to add some mixed media. You can see there are some splatters above the photos in Jackie's sketch. So I want to make sure I do that as well. And I'll be using my um, shimmers paints today. So just gluing everything down, distressing the edges, trying to be mindful of where the papers are going and not 
wasting my time distressing bits that are going behind the photos. <laughs> And you can see, I just like a tiny bit of these peeking out, but it's all just adding interest to that photo and bringing in some new colours. Again, checking the positioning each time. I love this paper because I love that peachy pink that it's gone on it. And just using my scissors to chop bits out. When it's going so close to the edges of the photos and you're distressing the edges, it really doesn't matter if it's a tiny bit wonky using a long scissor like that makes it much easier to cut them straight as well. So distressing the bottom because I wasn't exactly sure where to position this paper. Once I tried again, I realized that it did need to be at the top. So Nearly there now with the layers. Just bringing in some of this black and white to the bottom. Consider using that scalloped edge that's, well, the reverse scallop that's been created from punching out those circles, but I decided I just wanted a straight edge this time. But it's always good to look at the shapes that you've got left on your papers to see if there's any way of using them in your layouts. Sometimes it creates a little bit of interest and it's something a bit different, you know. Again, just layering each time and checking. And I do later on trim off that border on the right hand side of this photo because it overlaps the other photo a little bit too much. Just that um, white piece that's poking out. So now working on the right hand photo, this one's nearly done as well. I don't add quite so much to this one. Just feel it didn't need it. So mirroring what I've done on the right on the left hand side using this black and white paper again. Once again just distressing those edges. And it really does add a nice texture and because I'm not mounting these on foam pads this time, um, you've got some height going on with all the papers here. Just one more piece, <laughs> always just one more, one more. Just felt that it needed something else at the top there. And there we go. So now I'm going to come in with my mixed media and I'm using Inkling's Oaky Bear Blue just to create two little pools of colour. And rather than the sketch, which has one at um, either side of the tops of the photos, I'm doing top left and then bottom right. So just blending it out. As I say, just a small splodge really of paint. I didn't want too much on this layout. Adding a bit more water because it's getting a bit thick. <laughs> and you want it to be able to move easily on your page, so watered down is always the best option because you can always add more. And then adding some splatters. And then I wanted to add some on this top corner as well, just for continuity really. And without realizing, you can see I'm starting to create that top left, bottom right diagonal that I so often do in my layouts. Once that was dry, I decided that I wanted to bring in a little bit of the pink. Amelia's got a different colour pink on her um, rose on her cardigan. And also the red that they put on the Titanic was coming through quite pink on the photos. So I grabbed another, it's Pinko de Mayo Shimmers. And I'm just adding a teeny tiny bit of that to the blue and also adding some splatters. Once these watercolours are dry, you can paint over them and get different layers of different colours, which is really nice. Obviously, if you do it while they're still wet, they're just going to blend together. But leave it till it's dry and they layer perfectly. So that's that done. So I want to work on that top left-hand cluster that Jackie's got in her sketch. I'm using one of the chipboard pieces from the print shop collection, but these are very, very thick. So I'm just peeling off some of the layers behind <coughs> to reduce the height of the chipboard, mainly because I wanted to add one of my Hey Little Magpie flare buttons on there as well. So it's adding a lot of height to the layout if you layer it onto chipboard. 
so you can see there. And the piece at the bottom is one of the labels, label stamps from Ellie Studio that I've um, pre, pre stamped. I think that one's done in speckled egg. And then again, using one of those half circles from um, the scalloped border that I had left over. And that little black star is from the Hey Little Magpie embellishment kits that we sell. They're full of lovely little findings, something a bit different that you don't get when you're just buying collections. So you're just getting all this, like this section stuck down. While well, those that mixed media dries, it's almost dry now. And then I can bring the photos back in. So you can see there, I must have done it off camera. I've cut the right hand side piece off that photo of James making his hat. It just layered better on the other photo by removing that. So getting them both glued down and then I can start embellishing around them. And you can see in Jackie's sketch, she used square photos. Uh, I tried trimming these photos down, but I didn't want to lose too much from them. So um, ended up keeping them the size that they are. So now using the print shop alphabet stickers to create the title, which is making Titanic hats. I absolutely love this alphabet. I do need another pack. And now I'm going on to the 6x12 stickers and you can see these are well loved as well. So I took a little round piece that says love this and then this blue word strip says do it for yourself. And I'm just slowly building up little bits and pieces around the photos for interest. This piece says create something daily which I thought was perfect because obviously they're doing a make and take. And then this little pink piece that says awesome. It's a little banner saying awesome so that worked nicely. And now I wanted to use the rest of this border strip that I've used previously on a layout. So just cutting a strip off. I think I'm going to use it on that right hand side photo. But in fact, it goes onto the top left of the left hand side photo. Just pushing out those bits that <laughs> inside it. So I try it there. But then decide I prefer to have it up here. So just nestle it under the photo there. I don't like the sudden abrupt ending of it at the bottom, so I'm just pulling off a little heart, a little star, sorry, to add to that. And then a little heart on the right hand side to build up that cluster there. I think about adding a little heart here, but it doesn't stay there. So just looking to see what else I can use on this sticker sheet. And this is where I move that heart. I move it up by the star. So now onto the sticker book. And straight away I find a label. You know how much I love tucking labels under if you've watched my videos before. So just tucking that label under and that finishes that end perfectly with putting that little star back as well. And then using the other half of that label sticker there on the right hand side. Just seeing what else I might be able to use. And I find this little gold, um, it's like a paint um, strip so just using that and a little heart just to hide that join where the label ended I love this pink circle so well it's a peachy pink so adding that to that cluster in the top left hand corner and a little star so just continuing I saw there were some little gold splatters left on this sheet, which I thought it'd be good to use up just to add something different to these little clusters of mixed media. And then I decided to come back with this border strip and add that to the top. So very nearly finished now. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this process video. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos and um, give this video a thumbs up because it really does help me so much on the algorithms on YouTube and um, I shall see you for my next video soon. Thanks so much. Bye.